Four o'clock, I'll call the uh, meeting of the Economic Improvement Corporation to order, and uh, Greg is going to do the invitation. All right. Please bow with me. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us in so many ways. We're so thankful to be a part of this community. We pray for your guidance and direction today. We thank you for the rain. We ask you to bring more our way. And uh, pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Okay. The, uh, do we have any announcements? No, sir. All right. Uh, first item on the agenda then will be the Visitor Citizens Forum. Do we have any... Speakers registered for the visitors forum? Okay, no speakers. All right, moving on to item five, approval of the minutes. Uh, looking for a motion to approve the minutes of September 19th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Minutes are approved. Okay, on to our monthly uh, reports. First off, the uh, KEDC report. Gil? Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, allow me to introduce uh, Katie Milton Jordan. She is the uh, newest member of the KDC team. She started the KDC two weeks ago as the manager of business development, entrepreneurship, and talent. Can't believe it's been two weeks already. It seems a lot longer than that. Uh, before this, uh, she was a business broker for Texas business buyers in Kerrville. Uh, we worked with her uh, when she was running the Mastermind Beer, uh, Business uh, Series for the uh, Entrepreneur Center. She's an ICF certified business coach and also a conversational intelligence coach. So I still haven't asked her what that is, but uh, I'm always here in red. Uh, but every time uh, we talk, I always think about, like, she gives you my intelligence or what, you know? It's probably not good, but so. So she's a native of uh, Minnesota, but she's been in uh, Kerrville long enough to where she calls this place home. Uh, Fourth generation entrepreneur, very familiar with the uh, challenges as far as uh, business, uh, family businesses, and helping them scale up. Uh, she's got a degree in business administration and is currently working on an MBA in ethical leadership from uh, Shriner University. So I uh, think she's going to bring a much uh, needed uh, dimension uh, to the KDC as it pertains to uh, working projects, uh, helping local businesses, our entrepreneurial base and helping upskill our, our local talent. So if you all haven't met her, please definitely t uh, you know, take some time to uh, meet her. Uh, she's uh, um, going 100 miles an hour, which is, uh, I'm used to running 100 miles an hour, but she's running a little faster than me, so I have to like catch <laughs> up. So uh, great addition to our team. Okay, moving on to uh, local economic indicators. Uh, our unemployment rate, we are at 3.5% for the month of August. That's the same rate as in June, uh, which is down from 3.7 in July. Uh, this year, uh, the lowest we've been has been about 3.0%. So we expect that figure to start dropping the closer we get to the holidays. Uh, there was a recent article in the Wall Street Journal about the housing uh, market. And it was pretty interesting because in, in 2019, the average listing price for a starter, starter home was uh, just below 220000 which would re yeah. require roughly uh, about $49,000 household income to be able to qualify and, and you know, afford one of these homes. Today, that same home is listed for about $350,000, uh, which is more than a 50% increase in price in just a little uh, under three years. And our uh, interest mortgage rates have uh, doubled in you know, those three years as well. So today, buyers would need a $96,000 household income to afford that same house. So uh, the reason I bring that up is because, yes, uh, workforce is, is, continues to be a community challenge and you know, a challenge throughout the U.S., as well as housing. But now, you know, looking uh, from an economic development standpoint and what's on the horizon, that's going to be another challenge, you know, the uh, looking at wages, you know, so if people are going to be able to uh, afford a house, they're going to need higher wages. So again, this is something that we're looking at uh, that's in the pipeline as far as a challenge in the next few years. Uh, last month, uh, I was in Oklahoma City um, at the uh, International Economic Development Council. Uh, we received three awards of excellence. Uh, there were two bronze awards and then a gold uh, for our special purpose website. Um, also at the conference, we actually met the representatives from UTSA for their SBDC uh, program. Uh, so we're actually hosting a delegation in uh, November. 
Um, and um, they said, look, you know, we've heard that there's good things happening in Kerrville. We need to be in Kerrville, to which I said, well, you just uh, drive down the road and, and uh, we'll start uh, with a uh, simple visit. So that will be happening next month. Uh, on that same note, I, uh, there was a, a retail developer that uh, we had a uh, Zoom a meeting uh, last week from the Dallas area, and uh, he's got a, several uh, uh, retail retailers in his uh, portfolio and said, things are happening in Kerrville, we need to be in Kerrville. So it's interesting because that's been kind of a recurring theme in the last six months, so uh, things are happening, that's good. Yeah, on the airport side, the uh, I've met with Mary Rora a couple of times, and we're doing a uh, we're having a doing a deeper dive as far as projects here at the uh, before the end of the year, some of the projects at the airport. But really, from our standpoint, looking at the next real big project that we would have at the airport would be uh, helping uh, some of the local companies that are there grow, because we've heard from two companies that said if we had the space, I mean we'd fill it in. We've got the business. So again, now looking at how, and that's part of our BREE program, helping local industry grow. So that's our next step as far as the airport. Uh, from the governor's office, we're hosting Mr. Uh, Ricardo Canova. He's uh, a, uh, the regional representative. He's replacing Katie Stafford. And uh, Katie was the one that was very instrumental in helping us uh, uh, get some of those incentives uh, and get everything in line for the Kildeer project. So now Ricardo's coming in in her place. Uh, so uh, we're doing, you know, Again, the community tour and just kind of showing what we have in the area and walking them through some of the projects as well as challenges. Uh, this week will be part of that I-10 uh, corridor development study. Uh, and again, these, this is a, it's a long process, but they're looking at what kind of projects are coming into your, com your community that would need access to I-10. So again, this is for infrastructure upgrades. Uh, we are hosting this week a uh, firm out of uh, another firm. It's a site selection firm actually out of Dallas. Uh, specifically looking at opportunity zones uh, for an array of uh, developers uh, from retail commercial to some industrial users as well uh, asking about specific sites and what have you and was very interesting they you know he asked uh, and we've heard this before is you know one of the reasons we're going in is we just need to kind of get a feel for what the appetite of the community is for local business uh, so again it's part of what we do trying to align you know everything so they can see that it's a pro-business community, which we are. Okay, so I'll do a quick report here on uh, Kildeer. So they have, uh, cur they're currently now at 70 employees. So they have officially surpassed uh, their uh, target of being at 50 employees before the end of the year. Uh, and just to kind of put things in perspective uh, as far as growth and all, in their family of companies, they've got three in North Dakota, one in Texas, so there's four in total. So Kildeer has officially become the second largest of their family of four companies. And they said at the rate that we're going, we'll probably be the largest one in the next three to five years, uh, which is something that we're not expecting at the time. But again, now that they're here and with their suppliers or their uh, clients being both in San Antonio and Dallas, they're getting uh, additional uh, work out of that. So uh, that's why they're here. That's why they, they chose Texas and us. Uh, to have that ca capability to uh, scale their business. Uh, along those lines, uh, the president of their operations is here to, uh, in our community um, this week. Uh, some of their other uh, team members as well, management team members, coming in to check on the uh, progress of their workforce as well as the construction of the new facility as well as uh, the current facility that they're in. So um, some of our leadership, which includes you all, have been invited for a Facility Renovation Commencement uh, and Economic Development Progress Report. I had to read that one several times. but um, So it's, it's a tour of the current facility, and if you all have an opportunity to go, um, it's uh, this is where the passion, my passion in economic development comes out. You go into the facility where the, Katie and myself were there a couple of weeks ago, and uh, one of the first things you see is their organizational chart. And, uh, you know, their upper management, there's a few of them from, uh, you know, that moved in from North Dakota. But then all the other employees, 60 plus employees, they're all from Kerrville. And you see them and you're like, it, it's a reminder that this is why we do what we do. This is what, you know, this is why we do that, you know. Uh, recruit those companies. Uh, you all were instrumental in, the, in recruiting that company as well. 
because now that's 60 plus families that are having an opportunity at a, um, uh, you know, being supported by good paying wages by this company that was recruited here to this area and more. So again, that's, that's kind of like, you know, I come in and I see that and it's like, okay, that's, that's why I do what I'm doing. Now, don't get me wrong, I get paid, right? But, uh, but that's, that's where we're helping really develop and uh, increase the wealth in our region. Okay, so next week we have a couple of events. Uh, so I'm wrapping up here. We have uh, the Small Business Series. That's through the governor's office, so they'll be in town next week uh, for their uh, conference. That's Thursday morning at Shriner University. Uh, so they're going to have a, a series of panel uh, uh, discussions. Uh, they're expecting to draw 200 to 250 businesses from Central Texas, and that includes San Antonio and Austin. And uh, these discussions are going to be cybersecurity for small business, marketing and branding, and uh, access to financing, which Mr. Greg Appel is one of the panelists on that one. And then uh, the lunch will be a fireside chat with Texas Iberico, which is a, uh, a large uh, food manufacturing and processing plant in Central Texas that was uh, supported by the governor's office and has now become a huge supplier for HEB. Uh, shortly after that, following the lunch, then is our program, which is our second annual uh, business innovation uh, forum. So we've got three speakers lined up for that. Uh, that's Mr. Sebastian Garzon, uh, who's with Alamo Angels, which is an investment uh, firm out of uh, San Antonio. They've, they've got a great story. Dr. Craig Rotter, he's a Texas a and professor coming in to give us an economic update as far as uh, uh, Kerrville and the state of Texas. And then our closer for that day will be uh, Ms. Uh, Mary Lou Retton, who's a um, great motivational speaker, obviously a great inspiration, a great story. Uh, so when you think of the 1980s or you see the 1980s on TV, you know, it's her, her image pops up. So um, the fact that, uh, you know, she, uh, someone of her caliber was able to, you know, accept uh, the invitation to come and speak at our community, I mean, that speaks volumes. So. We're very excited about that, and uh, and then we finish with a uh, networking mixer at the Trailhead Beer Garden. So, so again, I think between tomorrow and uh, next week's uh, events, uh, you know, Kerrville is is in for a real nice uh, uh, treat. Uh, no pun intended, right? But for a real nice treat. So, that concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions, anyone? Logistics. Logistics for tomorrow. It the it said one to five. Is that the expectation if if we attend the, the Okay, so it's just broken but broken up into two parts. Uh, the one o'clock is the tour at the per, uh, temporary facility on Cobbler Lane, which is the city's west side. Um, they've got enough parking out there on the back side. Uh, and then two fifteen is the buzzies. I am not too sure about the parking there. Uh, that's Kildare is the one that's organizing the whole event, so okay. I'm assuming it's wherever you can find, you know, parking out there. So they're expecting 40 to 50 people. Expectation isn't all the whole time, though. You know. Okay, so mm -hmm. like if we were able to come at the 2:15 time, that would be. You you should be fine. Yes. That should mm -hmm. be fine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the 2:15 they'll do a virtual tour of uh, of their. Um, facility that's under construction and they'll be talking about you know what they're doing at the, the temporary one I just want to congratulate you on the awards you've been doing a great right. job it's good to see other people are taking notice so yeah. good thanks job. welcome mm -hmm. okay I guess that's it thank All you right. thank you next item is the uh, uh, project status update Thank you all so much for taking the time today. We appreciate it. Um, you got the list that's there. Uh, Tranquility Island Electrical Infrastructure is still pending the general land office. So we're still just kind of waiting on that. Once we get that, and uh, should be able to move. Pending what? The GLO. So we're working on easements from the general land office because uh. it's the waterways. And so that's kind of the, the I mean, everything's everything's pretty well done but there's just a few little pieces that uh, engineering needs to have before it's finished and so it's kind of in that process right there so but the construction is all complete and lights are in and all that yes sir yeah it's just easement acquisition at this point <clears throat> so uh Kerrville airport updates you heard Gil talk about that a little bit um and at last month's meeting 
we had an extension, an amendment to the contract to kind of push that out uh, an additional year to 48 months total for the contract. And so that's going on the council's agenda for um, next week's meeting. Um, and so hopefully we'll start seeing some dirt turn and get that project going for the for the row hangers and then the site work that you all are helping to participate in right there. Um, Kildeer Mountain, I'm so excited to hear that that number's over 50 and well over 50. Um, so um, I think all of us are real excited for them to get in their facility. And it'll be, if you have a chance to, to go by tomorrow, see what that virtual kind of update looks like for that facility. That's, I think it's going to be a real neat uh, addition. Um, I know that we had some well plugging and um, Stuart and Kyle gave me some updates on some of that stuff that's going on up there, but they're, they're moving as fast as they can get to get in the new, bu new building. And the last one on the list, Peterson Regional. Um, so they did begin construction on the offsite parking. A lot of what you're going to see out there is the erosion control at this point, and the contractor should be going by mid-November. Uh, the surgery center is underway, um, but it looks like about mid-November for, for starting to work on all the parking out there. And with that, that's pretty much the update I've got. Does everybody have the information for tomorrow, where to go? And Okay. All right. If you need any of that information, just don't hesitate to reach out. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to the finance report. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. How are y'all? Um, okay, so the final month of fiscal year 2022 is the September financials here. All right, jumping right into the statement of activities um, on your current period and your columns to the right are the areas we're looking at. So your September sales tax came in at 397000 for the month. Um, this was a small increase, 1.8% over September 2021, and we told you we'll get that comptroller report and look at it. So... Um, we look at businesses that contribute $5,000 or more per month, kind of compare those trends, and um, manufacturing was down by 41%. Um, real estate and leasing was down by about 22%. Of course, the housing inventory is a factor with that, so those transactions aren't taking place as much. Um, but we did make up a little bit in other categories, such as the construction, that was up 21%, and retail and food service, those were both up, so that's kind of how we came in kind of flat. So what was our total <clears throat> for the year? Uh, uh, right now, if you look over there to your um, your day actual, four million eight hundred and two thousand. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, if we, uh, what percentage were we up over year over year? So um, we were we've been trending ten to twelve percent average this year. That was through the September number. Um, we budgeted five percent over. Fiscal year so for the past year, we've we've been well exceeding the five percent we've plugged in for this year. Yes, ma'am. All righty. So um, since that September tax was kind of flat, we were anxious to see what October was going to do, and we did receive that um, on Friday, and that came in at four hundred forty-two thousand. That is close to a twenty-one percent increase over October of twenty-one. So that we feel a lot better about that flattening, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. definitely watching it. Um, the deposit summary didn't really show anything notable. Um, we can't see too many out-of-period payers, so once we get that report, um, we'll, we'll follow up with the report on that next month. Um, and on your columns to the right of that, your year-to-date actual is 4802000 We anticipated you to be at about $4.1 million at this point, so you have um, exceeded budget by 656000 we do have uh, one more entry, uh, cruel entry to book, and that's probably about $100,000. So that's going to land you about $4.9 million for the year, and that's what we're pretty much anticipating. Um, we will give you a final report out on fiscal year 22 numbers next month before we jump into the new year. Can we get the budget at that time? Uh, yes, well, we presented budget already, but we'll, um, we can um, re put that in the packet. Sure. Okay, dropping down to the next uh, revenue is your interest income, and September earned $11,272. We had $8,800 in the pool account, $1,525, and $913 in your commercial paper investments y'all have. Um, so 
Year-to-date interest revenue is $39,761, and you have exceeded budget by $30,000 for the year. Okay, moving on to your expenditures. In the next section down, you have your final monthly administrative fees for $16,250, and the final monthly debt transfer of $90,781. And then right below that, you'll see investment purchases. So $979,000 went out to make that second commercial paper investment. Um, to replace the one that's fixing to mature next week. And that was going that is a six month maturity and it's earning 4.97%. So that was a, a great move we made there. And then down to the project section, there's no financial activity report for projects at the moment. And so that gives you a negative 677,000 um, for your change in net position for the month. But of course that's because of the investments, but overall 874,000 for the year. It's a positive net change. The um, rating on the commercial paper, is it double A or better? Uh, yes, sir. Follow, um, it's it's um, A1P1. Okay. I think that's our how they're, they're rated. Okay. Okay, on to the cash flow. So your first column is all of fiscal year 22 activity, and down at the bottom row is... Uh, your cash balance of $3,605,000. And your next column over to the right is just the, the estimations for our first quarter of fiscal year 23. And then your columns to the farthest right are the remainder projections for fiscal year 23. And if you just take note in the investment lines, investment maturity and purchases, we went ahead and plugged in a million dollars for hoping we could re-up those investments every six months as they mature. It's kind of something we want to look at doing. And then you have your ending cash balances there at the bottom just to see what y'all have to consider. Okay, and your last slide is your financial analysis. Um, your sales tax chart there is just your fiscal year budget actuals and comparisons. And then your uh, chart there on the bottom is your project analysis. So the airport uh, project, we adjusted that um, for what we're trying to get approved here is um, the remaining of the contract for just the box hanger site work and the rest of the horseshoe project dollars kind of fell off. So we adjusted those off um, just to give you a true remaining of what, what would be allocated to the airport. Okay, um, and then we possibly have some funding agreements that we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. Um, so if those projects make, we'll add those to the list here. And then your top chart there is your cash analysis with your text pool balance and then your two commercial paper um, balances. So you have a total of 5,582,000 invested earning money. Um, let's see, the text pool right now is earning 2.61%. Your one commercial paper that's falling off is 1.85% and then you have that new one coming on at 4.20%. And that is all we have on finances. Any questions? Could, um, we spent a moment on the um, statement of that, uh, I mean the uh, cash flow forecast. Yes, sir. Uh, just want to be sure I've got this right. So as we sit without any future commitments, you're projecting that at the end of next a year from now, we'll have almost $7.4 in text pool or something else and a million in commercial paper for a total asset base of $8.3 million. Can you repeat that one more time? We have we're showing seven point three million as ending cash balance, mm -hmm. and I'm inferring that you'll have we'll have one million in commercial paper investment based on this cash flow. Yes, sir. So for total cash and basically liquid would have eight point three million. Correct. A year from now. Well, actually, that's a wash. That's an in and out. So you have well, yes, it will be tied up. A million be tied up. But if you were to cash it in, yes, you have that additional million. Yeah. But I'm saying that's in addition to 7.3, so we've yes. got $8.4 million of liquidity between now and the end of the year next year. Yes, sir. And we've got, I think, 800000 committed uh, to Peterson and then about ninety five for the airport. So we've got about $900,000 in commitments as we sit here right now. For now, this Peterson contract was 1.6, and I don't know if we're going to pay out that much this year, but we're well, we got, hoping at least like We've got 800000 we're going to pay. In this quarter, yeah, we talked about two payments, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to pay eight hundred thousand this quarter. So by the end of the, the by this time next year, there'll be eight hundred thousand left on that commitment. Yes, sir. Um, 
it seems to me, kind of following up from our last meeting, that we should take some real advantage of this interest rate situation as to where we are right now. Um, you know, we can make some, I think, some significant, uh, well, significant, uh, very safe money uh, on uh, going ahead and getting more money in CP now as opposed to just letting it sit in cash. Uh, I think, uh, um, and certainly CP can always be sold, but we've got nothing we're going to talk about today. I think it's going to be funded in the next six months anyway, or eight months at least. Um, Unless something shows up, you're right. So, I mean, you know, I think that, you know, for me personally, um, I think that we ought to uh, take at least half our money and get it to CP right now. What's uh, text pool paying right now? Text pool is, uh, today is 314. Hmm. And that commercial paper we bought, that was MUFG Bank? Yes, MFUG Bank. You know MFG. what that is? I've it's never a, heard of that. the largest Jap Japan, J Japanese bank. Is that pretty normal for other companies with an A1P1 rating? Yes, sir. That's um, based on our investment policy. All the, what we can get into, the credit ratings have to fall in line. Pretty Pretty nice premium to the text pool. Six month. It really is. We don't have anything out there, and I mean, I just, you know, uh, we could make I mean, very much increased yield right now. Don't know how long it's going to last, but I really do think we should take advantage of it right now while we as we sit here. We can look at it. Um, we do want to. Uh, we do have to stay within limitations. We can't. Uh, we have to diversify our portfolio, and we can't go out too far out on certain investments we'll take a look at your overall numbers and see what how much we can put out there as well as consider the next things that are coming down the line just how those agreements can be worked out and cash flow well uh, this japanese bank obviously qualified mm -hmm. for something we can invest in is there a maximum dollar limit in any one any one credit that we can have no sometimes they break it up they're looking for just a million or they may want oh you're talking about the seller when they're selling right credit. okay all right i'm talking about the from the from the our state, or, or are there any laws that prohibit us from that, that restrict our investments to certain quality certain uh, companies? Um, yes, we do. It's really safe. A lot of the stuff that we do is all government um, type <coughs> investments. Um, I'll have to look. We'll have to talk to the investment advisors and see if there's anything that we can't. We just got to stay away from. I mean, everything we've they've brought to our attention. They know our policies. They know what limits we sure. can go. So. They haven't stirred us. Can I say? Yes. So one thing to consider is, as a guide, we try to keep our commercial paper at 30% of less of our total investment. So if you've got $3 million in the bank, we don't want to put everything into commercial paper. And it's just kind of a diversification rule. Right now, treasury bills are, are pretty good. We talked to them this morning. And so we do have some other options. But keep in mind, once we tie it up, we can't just sell it. So when it's tied up for whatever period of time we invest it for, it depends if we can if we buy it at a discount or how we buy that, you know, we don't want to lose money by having to cash in. So I think keep that in mind from a cash flow if you're going to go fund something. And I would think about those projects as you're going forward before we jump off into tying up. Are, the, are there penalties for selling commercial paper prior to maturity, or is it just no, subject to market price? It's market value. So, so if we... How rates do, it may or may not sell it. Uh, yes and no. And it also depends on if we buy it with a coupon or something like that, because we're buying it for less than the value. So... It's going to be at fair market value, and that's whatever we can sell it for, or if you have to dump it, that's a completely different issue. So there's a lot of factors when we go to selling stuff like that. Um, so I was just responding to that. Well, we can just sell it if we have to, because that's not always that simple. Um, you know, there'll be some. We don't want to. We don't want you to lose money. So that's kind of our job is to make sure we definitely don't want you losing money on an investment. I would think that on a maturity that short, that that's there what would be subject to a lot of market fluctuation we do buy it at a discount and yes it mm -hmm. will depend on the market of where you're selling out at um, right obviously if you you're going lower than what you bought then there's that chance yeah. but and you're right i wouldn't see short. these rates holding for a long period of time and we talk about that too you know we're looking at things 475 uh today tomorrow you know who knows they might be back down to four and a quarter so we watch that every day in fact we just had that meeting today from the general fund this fund and also looking at our bonds that we have as far as what to do with those. So um, obviously safety is number one, um, and we do want to take advantage of that. But looking at cash flow, you know, we just bought this other one, so you're tied up, is that one six or nine? Six. That one's six. So, 
you know, if you buy another one, you know, I would think laddering it is probably the best approach for you guys. And that way, if you have something come up, you have one maturing, and then you can just continue to roll. So, and no question, we've got a lot of cash sure. in here. I mean, we do not have liquidity. Agree, agree. I mean, we don't have a liquidity issue. I just wanted to clarify, months. you know, just selling it is not, I mean, there's a process we have to go through to do that. Through, and I wouldn't yeah. want us to sure. put anything out there. There'd be the remotest chance that we would need the money. But of course. There's not a remote chance. Right. We're going to need $4 million in six right. months. So we can not look at some other chance. things. My suggestion might not be CP because we do use that 30% as a guide. And, you're, you know, we're looking at, you know, what do we have in there right now? Three million each, two million tied up right now. So we can look at the other things that were out there today on the offerings and see, you know, if that's something as a board you want us to put more money into something, just keep in mind, you know, once it's in there, it's in there. So we'll definitely explore. What other that. options is the city looking at? I mean, we look at everything. There's some federal uh, home centers. banks. There's some treasuries, stuff like that. Most of those are longer term. So you're looking at at least nine months, sometimes to a year. Um, I think with a million dollars, you're probably fine and safe at a year. Um, some of those have equally as good interest rates right now um, that we were looking at today. So especially federal home loan banks and stuff like that have pretty good interest rates. We looked at like a 475 today, um, some things like that. So there's some other things out there. It's just going to be a little bit longer out than commercial paper. But I wouldn't, um, just based on what we use as a general guide, we try to keep it at 30% or less um, for as a rule for diversification. So Federal home loan bank is... What kind of material? Uh, sometimes we can get it. Well, this had, this one today we looked at actually had a call. It had a three-month call, but we don't know months. if it'll get called or not. But 11-month max mm -hmm. was the one we looked at today. That was the 475 we looked at today. For 11 months? Mm -hmm. But it potentially have a three-month call. So there's a potential, you know, could end at three months. We just don't know. There's no guarantee on that. So just all things that we look at when we're trying to decide, you know, where to put money to keep it the safest and also make sure you have liquidity when you need it. Could y'all do... Uh, give us a few options and mm -hmm. maybe send out an email to the to the board so that sure. we can maybe do an email. Just keep in mind that oftentimes it, we have, you know, 15 to 20 minutes to react to something. If it comes across, we have to make a decision or it's gone because well, he's sending it out uh, to the market. I think the board just wants to know kind of a little bit more about what the different options are, what the pros and cons of those would be. And, sure. And well, maybe we just bring you that and say, you know, here's typically what we, we look at. Um, investment opportunities, different things we look at on a daily basis that are coming across the board. Um, and that way we can talk through some of that kind of stuff. And that way, when we kind of figure out how you're feeling about different things, when it comes across, you know, like today when the one came across that we wanted to buy, you have to do it right then. It's not a matter of can we get back to you later because he's sending it out to, you know, everyone else. So we could also, couldn't we just do 90 or 180 day T-bills? If it's there, mm -hmm. depends on, you know, what's on the market at the time. And we talked about T-bills today too. Definitely an option. And those are, the interest rates on those are actually really good right now. So, so. if I might make a suggestion, mm -hmm. um, next month, if we brought you all back some options and also kind of for the sake of the new members on the board, sort of what's that regulatory environment look like for us? What are standards that the city tries to use for where we would buy <clears> that paper from, where we would buy those investments from, um, and, and, you know, maybe what not, what we wouldn't buy it from, just to, so everybody has a good understanding of that. And then from a policy standpoint, obviously we can't call you when something's coming up in 15 minutes, right. but if we know, you know, you want to ladder products at a million dollars every three months or, or six months, whatever that is, then they know where to go moving forward. Sure. That way we can look at only those options when they're presented to us. Uh, I don't want to lose another month. Sure. That's, I'm, that's what I was just going to say. I don't think. Well, why don't, why don't they want to wait that long? Sure. If you want us to look at that and, and buy you something that makes sense, then we can certainly do that. But it's not a matter of we can go back and forth and ask for opinion because it'll be gone by then. So it'll, I understand. I used to be in trade. Yeah. So, so uh, I'd like to see us authorize them uh, at the best rate available to buy, uh, put some money in six month treasuries right now. And then we can talk about an overall strategy a little bit later, but I just hate sitting here losing, losing an opportunity right now that we've got. Yeah. We don't need the money. We've got plenty of liquidity. And I just, I don't see why they know the month. Okay. What are the maturities of the, of the current commercial papers <clears throat> that we have? Six months, um, six months you yeah. said. Six months from now? Mm -hmm. No, so one's our, next month. One's next, next month. Week. Next week. That one million bucks off. next week. So we'll have that million that was invested at the 175 that'll be falling off. 
that Trina replaced kind a of ahead of time. Plan for what we do with that, and then figure out how much of what we have in the uh, text pool we want to invest in something. Do you want to make a motion? Um, I mean, so I don't. This is just a report. You need one. Yeah, I don't think you need one because, as part of our administrative agreement, that's part of the service we provide. So it's. Uh, but we want to give you direction. Is what we're trying to. Do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. How much do we want to invest in? So the cash balance will be four point six after we get the million back. Is that where we are currently? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, it's five point six. Yeah. We've got. Where are we right now? I'm sorry. We're at. Uh, you're at we're three point six. So yeah, next week so we'll have four point six. 6. Mm -hmm. By the end of the year, we'll have five five point. And then in three months or six months, was that a six month you bought? You said yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It'll mature in so we'll March. March. Yeah. It is, I guess what's a safe amount to keep liquid without without what are, what's our bottom what's our bottom cash balance where we're comfortable. Right. I think there's two issues. One is um, liquidity for project funding, right. and then the second is diversification of risk and how much do we want to have in text pool, how much do we want to have in commercial paper, how much do we want to have in other governmental, mm -hmm. you know, whether those are T-bills or um, agencies or, I mean, what, mm -hmm. whatever those, those other federal home loan bank um, I'm not sure I have quite enough information to really structure a policy around that right now. And certainly want to invest the million dollars and, and maybe, you know, as much as a million dollars above that too right now. But I, I would like to see us get kind of a, give them some guidance. Okay, we want to keep X dollars liquid and this much in commercial paper and this much in other short-term investments. Yes, we do have a policy. So right now, EIC, the way it's written, follows the city's investment policy. So, you know, that would be the guide that we used uh, unless a completely separate policy was adopted, uh, which would, I would think, would have to be written, adopted, and approved by this board and also by council. So yes. we're you're saying that we are locked into what we've done right now based on... Based on our policy, but, but keep in mind, any of the things that we've talked about you know, if we were going to invest those funds, we would follow the guidelines that we use every day for the city's investment policy. So you're saying we can invest more than 30% in commercial paper? I would not recommend that just as a guidance. And, and any governmental, um, even our even our financial advisor, <clears throat> uh, without a policy gap. And we don't have a policy per se. That's a guideline that we use. Um, and that's a guideline that's pretty much standard um, in governmental municipalities really across the board. Okay. even from a financial broker. So that's why when we were talking today, even looking at some T-bills, looking at some securities of different types and those things, um, keep in mind we wouldn't take y'alls out as far as we would take the cities, the general fund money, because that's a little bit different. But we, you know, as a rule, would follow exactly what we follow for the city as far as guidelines and policies, regardless of types and um, whether they're bond ratings, those kind of things, uh, to make sure that we're, you know, following that same policy without having a financial investment background my concern would just be having what we think is a comfortable amount in the bank right. so that we have liquid funds at any given mm -hmm. time that that we're not ever down below where we could, could right. fund something sure. <laughs> I think so, that'd be the biggest question is what is your say you know what is your comfort level uh, with liquidity okay. so uh, under our present policy we're following are we able to invest let's say a total of $3 million in CP or Treasury or whatever at this point? No. No. Be a little less than that. Depends on... You Depends on your total cash. Yeah. Your total portfolio value, we wouldn't want to exceed 30%. So that is $5.5 million then? Yes. Total percent of $5.5 yes. million. 30% of $5.5 million. Yeah, I don't either. I do that are we already it. over that? Yeah, mm -hmm. right now we are. We're too many. Well, but you, but y'all bought we're, right. You bought one a cup a week before, yeah, right? They're yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Counselor, do we have to follow that? I mean, we are we yeah, bound. You it? do. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not the money guy or the investment guy, but it sounds like you're at a point where <clears throat> we could take consensus from what you all want and do something short term within the guidelines of the policy. 
maybe a little, and that might be a little bit of stopgap, and then bring the policy back to you all with some recommendations at your next meeting for you all to be, you know, it sounds like you want to be a little bit more aggressive or, or you know, within the bounds of, you know, good governance, sure. and um, we could we could do that. And it, I hear what you're it saying. It sounds like, I think what I would like to do is see us get at least to that 30% invested position <clears throat> and then begin to try to set up a ladder. Mm -hmm. So we've got a six-month maturity. We've got one that's getting ready to mature. So maybe that one that comes up we do on a 90-day. On a day. And then if there's an <clears throat> additional, maybe we're at 20% now, so trying to get us to 30% on that one, maybe go out nine months. So then we've, right. we've got a three, six, and nine-month and we're fully invested at the 30% for the city policy. Well, and CP does make sense um, for this board, just given the amount of cash flow, um, because it's short um, investments. You're not looking at tying up money for two to three years um, to get the same gain. So I get that, um, but we'll, I'll bring you, you know, if we can get you an email out this afternoon, I'll tell you what treasury bills we're sitting at today. We just looked at that, because that could be a, a easy filler. Uh, we could pick up a T-bill here, fill the gap, and then I agree when the, that one matures, maybe return it to a nine-month CP or something just based on your total portfolio. And we can certainly look at that. Because short term, really, it, with the kind of money you guys have, is is the smart way to go. Do, do we have to have a motion to that, or can we just tell them? I mean, do we need a motion? Does that, does that sound, I mean, that, that's within the policy. Well, yeah. I guess what I'd like to see them do is go ahead and invest a half a million to get us up to the million five. Yeah, maximize. Which would be the 30%. Okay. At, at, at best rate for 30, 60. I, I really don't care how long you put that out myself. But at any rate, at the best rate, and give us and then try to get a policy in place at the next meeting. Um, so we'll we can we'll go bring forward. you some guidelines and some ideas, and y'all can, and yeah, then we can we can move forward with that. Um, are you comfortable, given the projects you know right now, um, to go no longer than 12 months? Is, I'm would that very be comfortable a good, in 12 months. Would that be a good idea? I, I would be comfortable with that, um, since we're not talking about, you know, half of your portfolio or something like that. Um, and we might not have to, um, just as we're looking at best mm -hmm. rates. I'm very comfortable with that, but okay. I just I don't think they're going to stay around forever. So I think no. from an investment standpoint, when we've got close to five percent on the table, uh, it makes sense to try to capitalize on that. But should we make a motion to authorize the city to invest us up to our thirty percent maximum between now and the next the, okay. the next meeting between the maturity that we have and any uninvested funds, okay. so that we can get that working right. for us between now and the next meeting? Sure, second. 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 All in favor? We have to go back. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank well, you very much. Yes, sir. We'll bring you some some information next month. Okay. All right. Now we're moving on to uh, item seven A. It's a public hearing to consider uh, phase one of the River Trail extension from Tran Tranquility Island Bridge to the downtown Overlook along with environmental permitting for all phases of the downtown river trail to the G Street Bridge. No, we're at... Um, Did I jump too far ahead? Yeah, 6A, 6A would be the, uh, the... You just said 7A instead of 6A. <coughs> you said you read the right oh, I'm sorry, okay. <clears throat> Bottom of page one. <clears throat> Good afternoon, members of the board. Mike, we got to call that out again, or are we okay? Item 6A. We called out the no. river trail instead of the... We're okay. good. Okay. Good afternoon. At your previous meeting, staff presented a funding application for a utility relocation mm -hmm. and garage streetscape improvement project. So we are here today requesting a public hearing mm -hmm. and seeking approval of a project funding agreement for this project. So you all saw this presentation last month, but I wanted to quickly run through it as just a refresher. So just to highlight, it is an action item within the Kerrville 2050 plan, enhancing the access, functionality, and safety of the downtown parking garage. There are three projects that are currently going on that this will go in line with. So on the left is the Community Development Block Grant Program, and um, that is going to be installing pedestrian crosswalks right there in front of the HHHC. That's also going to be receiving a remodel. And then the bottom right is a part of the Cut South concept plan that will be adding um, string lighting across Water Street and Clay Street. Megan, on the block grant, 
-hmm. What else are we what else are we funding with that same block grant? So this is completely separate from the block grant. The the go back one slide. The 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 transitions, that's not block grant. So the transitions is block grant. Right. On uh, the crosswalks. Crosswalks. <clears throat> Yes, but, but what that's I, but separate don't, from this request. In addition to those, oh, things, I understand. Yeah. I, just, oh, oh. I understand. I'm just asking with that block grant, what else is being funded through that through piece? that piece? Yes. So through that piece, there are three significant projects that that block grant is we've received funding for. Mm -hmm. The first one is intersection improvements at um, Earl Garrett and Water. Then this is the second project, which is the pedestrian crosswalk and the three way stop at um, Clay and Water. And then the if we have any funding left over for that, it's going to be addressing the tree wells that have the bricks that have been. Okay. And just as a reminder, because I was asked about the block grant specifically, sure. so I'm, I'm asking this just a refresher. Um, the block grant specific to um, specific to pedestrian. Yes, ADA accessibility. Accessibility. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we know there was some discussion about that. So it's two set entirely separate projects, mm -hmm. right? right? One is a community development block grant, which we're still waiting on environmental review from the state. The project timelines for that is, uh, you know, hopefully faster uh, than slower, but we're at the mercy of the state. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that one is regarding, you know, has been approved, it's funded, it's made for accessibility, new street lights, <laughs> uh, hopefully a new turn lane on Earl Garrett uh, as a part of that and as much as we can fit into it. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is an entirely separate project right. uh, from that. Okay. So the first request that we received was from KPUB to do underground utility relocation. So that is um, proposed to be right there along Water Street from Sydney Baker to the AC Shriner Mansion. And when they do that, it will basically destroy everything that's in front of the parking garage. So that's why we looped these together um, for the garage streetscape improvements. So again, this outlines KPUB's request to you all to fund half of the construction costs. So they um, separated it with intersection closure and with partial road closure. So they're asking for half not to exceed 225, 287 for their, this portion. So the, the, the 400 not to exceed 400 not, not to exceed 400 and is a combination of this half plus the construction cost of the beautification on the streetscape side of the parking garage so just to refresh your memory on the beautification elements um, so we are looking to do stone veneering on the concrete panels on the side of the parking garage we're looking to do two raised planter beds um, and then wrought iron fencing on all of the open gaps. So this is kind of um, the street view and the bird's eye view closest to the Clay Water Street intersection. And then um, same design on the City Baker and Water Street. So behind City Hall is what we're looking to replicate of those raised planter beds that are made with stone. So like I said, we're looking to do two of those. And then inside those planter boxes, we're trying to stay with some low maintenance native plants and then zero scaping on um, the existing <coughs> planter beds that are on the ground. And then this is the raw iron fencing that's right in front of development services. Um, again, we will just do a simple black wrought iron. It won't have the city seal, but that's going to close off any open gaps along that side. So again, the total we're asking is not to exceed 400,000. Um, this is going to be half of KPUB's construction costs, not to exceed 225. And just the preliminary construction quote that we received was around $132,000. And I've got an update on the, there was two options in KPUB's list. One was for partial closure and one was for full closure of the street and discussions with public works. Uh, full closure of the streets not not going to be an option and so that's going to be a partial closure um, so that that number that 450 number is would be the one right, so the 225 we be able to close that that all the way down yeah. what's the projected timeline for completion 
So uh, we have Mike Whitler here from K-Pub, and he, Mike can speak to, to their timeline. I, I think we would expect to be started uh, at the first of the year and, and uh, probably about two months to actually get the work done. Um, I think in the funding agreement, we've got a little more breathing room than that. I think it says something like... I think June was... Mm -hmm. Yeah, February start in June... June completion, but I would expect to be done in the, you know, hopefully February or March. We split costs with you guys 50-50 not to exceed 225 on our side. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. So that's how we submitted the funding <coughs> request with the total estimated cost of 450 575 So we said not to exceed half of that for the EIC. That, oh, is that so, that relocation? Is that all the way across? Is that taking the lines down and everything, or is that just the part that's on the AC Shriner side? It's no, the it's, line. it's so, so it's yeah. starting. It's starting on Clay Street, about sixty feet south of Highway Twenty Seven, and so where the yellow line is, and it, then it's going down Clay Street. It actually crosses uh, Water Street onto the HHHC property, and then we've got one one tap going along the front of the garage and we actually there's another one running along the front of the HH HC so property to be buried in that area yeah then once the utility work is done how long for the beautification pieces uh, so we would we would uh, you know pending pending this would get approved I, th I think you'd probably be looking at We'd come in right after they work because it'd be exposed. Uh, so we'd have to coordinate that. But um, I think there's kind of two functions of it. One would be the bedding uh, and that material. Um, and I think that would that probably wouldn't take too terribly long. Um, the wrought iron material, if mm -hmm. any of that was to, to, to be a, por a part of it, that would just be kind of pending the availability of that material. So it's a little hard to answer that one because sometimes supply chain issues with that. 60 days, 90 it, days. Probably, yeah. 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 So, so you've got about forty thousand dollars in cushion based on your initial estimate on the beautification side, and is that going to fully fund the project? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So we're not anticipating going out to anyone else. On no, it? not on this one. No, ma'am. Okay. I guess I was confused about the ask to the TERS to the TERS board. I can speak to that. Yeah, yeah okay. I know. It. And and so this one is kind of confusing, right? Because. This project alone has two projects, right? So you have K-Pub's portion, and then you have the kind of streetscape beautification. And then we also have the TERS, which was asked to help fund the city portion of the CDBG grant, right? So the CDBG grant for accessibility that will deal with the crosswalks and the street lights, and TERS graciously helped fund uh, kind of the city match portion the, of that. On the block grant. Of the block grant. Okay. So they're, they're funding 52000 Okay. of the CDBG, and then K-Pub's project, and you guys would be, if you want to, partner with that portion of it. That makes sense. Yeah. Has K-Pub approved, their board approved this? Mike, if you could speak to that. No, no, so we've been talking about it with the K-Pub board uh, since January 2021, and it's been in front of the board uh, January, February, June 21, March 22, and then in the budget uh, budget workshops in August 21 and 22, but actual approval from our board will be one when we have a funding agreement. Uh, I'll need to get approval from the board to sign there, and then I also need to uh, when the when we get a final bid from the contractor, we'll have board approval there as well. Um, we did have. Two days after the, the EIC meeting last month, we had a discussion at our board and there were some uh, concerns about our cost numbers had moved around, but it, it was really scope that had changed. Uh, you know, over the past two years, we've talked about different potential scopes for the project. Um, and we have it posted for our board in two days as well. And, and there I wanna get a vote saying, you know, we support this funding request because there have been some questions about it. So, so you're wanting us to go first. Time wise, timing wise. I yeah, with the timing and everything, I think it. I think it. It could just be contingent on both both boards approving it and. 
I mean, it, you know, we'll have to bid things out and, and everything else. So there are other points where there, there are decisions, you know, decisions for our board to make as well. If we, if we come back in two months and we have a, uh, you know, the price, the bids we get are much higher than, than what we've anticipated, then that, that would, you know, that would be a problem and probably put a kink in things and slow things down. So I can't guarantee that it's, you know, everything will go smoothly, but we do, we did sharpen our pencils for these numbers. We have that 40,000 buffer. So in the past, when I was, so I was asking Mike about this and, you know, so if you decided you wanted to move forward with this project, it would be pending the approval of K-Pubs, you know, participation. Otherwise, it's just a moot point if they said they didn't want to. Um, obviously, they wanted to enough and they brought us this letter <clears throat> stating their intentions to, to move forward on that project. Um, and so we brought it before the city council and brought it before y'all. Um, so certainly, uh, certainly is a, a worthwhile project, part of our Kerrville 2050. Um, it does need this board's <clears throat> approval, city council's approval, K-Pub's approval for all of it. So who wants to go first sometimes? Yeah, I think that's always, uh, always an interesting question. So. Mike, can I ask you one more question? I think we kind of covered it last month. Is, does this benefit... Other than beautification, is there an additional benefit to doing this to our infrastructure? Yeah, so um, I tend to not want to oversell things. And after the last meeting, uh, EA gave me a little bit of a hard time. You know, there are benefits to undergrounding this. Um, number one, we're continuing a slow effort to underground areas of downtown. Um, and new development. And so if you go back over the years, we did Earl Garrett in 93, Sydney Baker north of us in 2000, Sydney Baker along here in south in 2010. We did work at the sports complex in 2015 and Olympia Drive in 2020. And all of those projects had a different mix of funding uh, where some like the Sydney Baker projects and Earl Garrett I believe we're entirely with with uh, city funding, and then uh, like the sports complex in Olympia Drive, K-Pub put up a significant amount of the the funding. Um, it provides a way for us to increase the capacity of the service to the AC Shriner Mansion. So the way that runs now, it, it's not it's not adequate. Now there's there's power available on the property, but the existing lines aren't. So it helps address that. Um, it provides for future connection to this section of underground line. So we have, we have the courthouse, uh, city hall, and then the businesses on Water Street here that only have one source of power. If we have a cable failure or something like that, it will result in an, ex an extended outage. So by working on connecting these two, that helps us uh, get a system that's more reliable and easier to maintain. Um, it also gives us a way to work the other direction, connect to the library uh, campus in the future, and removing the overhead lines allows the installation of the string lighting on Clay Street, and otherwise that location's kind of, kind of out. But it's undergrounding is expensive, and, you know, and the lines that are there do have adequate capacity to serve the area. You know, but I think when you look around downtown and look at the area around the area around City Hall, it's it's not the undergrounding is nice, so it but expensive. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I've um, I talked to Greg about this, and he's had conversations with Michael. Um, he um, was recommending <clears throat> that we table this until K-Pub and all this other stuff happens. He you know, we kind of started saying we didn't want to be the first ones in on projects, and his concern was about being the first one in here. Um, I suppose if we've got contingencies to get out, unless everyone else is fun, I, maybe that takes away. Mike, you. Well, let me just clarify a couple things too, um, Mr. Bond. On one of the whereas is talks about that this up, you know, this this serp, this project from K-Pub will upgrade the service in the area, and so that's in here. The other thing, too, is K-Pub is not a party to this contract. So 
if K-Pub, for whatever reason, goes back to its board, or Mike goes back to its board, K-Pub, and they don't approve it, then the staff is going to come back before you and say, hey, this this deal has changed, and, you know, what, what do we want to do now? So this, this agreement before you is only between the EIC and the city. You all will fund those different projects, and uh, the city will manage those funds. Okay. Any other board comment before we open the public hearing? Okay. I'm going to open the public hearing at 5 o'clock. Anyone rest to speak on this item? Melissa Southern. Hello, my name is Melissa Southern. Um, I'm a downtown business owner. I've been a downtown business owner for 17 years. Uh, obviously, I'm a citizen of Kerrville. I'm also the chairperson of the Main Street Advisory Board. Uh, so I'm here speaking as a citizen of Kerrville and a business owner, but um, I can tell you that all of us on the board are downtown business owners. That's what you need to do in order to be on the board. And um, there's not a meeting that goes by that we don't discuss, you know, the importance of beautification. We look at what the, the purpose of the board is and what we're looking for for downtown. And we always look at 2050 as well, right? And we always talk about how we want downtown to be more walkable. We want downtown to be more appealing, right? And all of that goes back to economic vitality. And the first thing that always comes up is, you know, the parking garage. So um, it looks to me like this particular project is almost like a combination of two things, right? So we're talking about what K-Pub needs to do and then we're sort of piggybacking on that and saying, you know what, why don't we go ahead and beautify, you know, do some beautification along the parking garage. And that's something that's regularly discussed in the Main Street meetings, and that's um, something that I think is important, you know, for, for downtown and to downtown business owners. So um, I just wanted to point that part out. I know we're talking a lot about K-Pub and what's happening, you know, with, with you know, going underground. Obviously, uh, it looks like that's probably a step forward, right, and something that's happening throughout the city anyway and that we're probably going to have to do. Um, but I think that it's also important to look at the fact that many of us for a while now have been trying to figure out what we can do to beautify the parking garage. So we're really lucky, actually, that we have that structure there already. You know, we're not trying to find some structure and find parking, right? So we have that structure. But that structure was clearly not built as an attractive parking garage. It was built, as we all know, for, as, a, as a parking garage for a hospital, right? But now we're trying to use it as a parking garage for a vital downtown. And so, you know, that, that component is missing. So I'd like, you know, just, you know, the board to consider that, that portion of it as well. Um, I also, I know that in your discussion, you've been talking a lot about who's first or, you know, who's going to do this first. It really seems from the presentation and just from, you know, what I know that is going on downtown that there's several different components already to this project, right? So this may be technically a new project, but it does work in combination with the block grant and all the things that we're trying to do downtown, including cuts as well. So I just wanted to put that out there and think that, you know, it's a, it's a good project overall and it works with our plans going forward. You know, it's not something that's kind of over here that we've decided to do, but it's sort of all works together in combination. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Anyone else like to speak? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing at 5.03. Any further discussion from the board or staff? I think with the contingency, I'm comfortable going ahead and voting on this, uh, on this item at this point. And, um, you know, I... My favorite part of this is the party lights over Clay Street, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really cool, and um, so I'm, I'm good to go Go ahead with folks. So, so, Mike, you're saying in here we already have the contingency in here? We don't need to add anything? Well, I was going to ask. <clears throat> so, no, not really. And so um, under agreement to fund project, I could put simply in there, subject to approval of K-Pub mm -hmm. to fund its portion of the project, comma, EIC agrees to. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to add that. <clears throat> and then one other thing, I didn't see in here, maybe I missed it, what the um, payment terms were, when we would pay this and how, and how would we authorize it to be paid. People do that. Payments, 
you're right. It's not, it's not in there. And so what, what if it's not in there, what, what usually happens is bill, as bills are presented, um, they come to this fund, and the fund looks and sees it, if it's eligible, and then they pay it off up to that $400,000. If you want to do it another way, I mean, sometimes you split it up, but that, that's generally how we do it. It's the simplest way to do it. And, yeah. you know, with, with city staff, you've got, you know, hawks on this stuff. So Yeah, well, I just wondered if we needed to, to authorize staff to pay a bill on our behalf that it need to be in this agreement. No. Because none of us are going to approve it. Right. And I just thought it would be in this agreement that as bills are – but. It doesn't, uh, what I'm saying, I guess, is it doesn't need to be. If, if you want more specific language, we can certainly add that. But this is our general form agreement that we've used for, uh, you know, kind of quote unquote city projects or city, pro you know, projects that are managed by the city. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you trustworthy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this request as presented with the. Uh, contingency on approval by the K-Pub board. A second? Second. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Raise your hand. Those opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. For party lights. Okay, on to uh, 6B, a project funding agreement between the City of Kerrville, Texas Economic Improvement Corporation and the City of Kerrville, Texas, for the installation of a fitness court within Louis Hayes Park. Good afternoon, EIC members. At your last meeting, staff presented a quality of life funding application for a fitness court in Louis Hayes Park. Um, if you recall, this is part of the national fitness campaign by Blue Cross Blue Shield. The city applied for the grant, and we are awarded a $50,000 grant for this purpose. As a reminder, the total project cost is $187,350, and the court would be installed in Louis Hayes Park, adjacent to the fountain and below the playground, which is highlighted in yellow on your screen. The funding makeup would be um, 50000 from the grant, 10000 from HEB, uh, 27350 from Parkland, and up to 100000 from EIC. Uh, we're still working with a potential um, private citizen that might be interested in donating. They're out of the country at this point, but they should be back in the next couple of weeks, and we'll have a decision from them. So if they decide to contribute, your portion would be lower than 100000 so as you're aware, the approval process consists of several steps. It goes to the EIC twice, the council twice. We've already received authorization from the council. Um, at your last meeting, you directed us to present a funding agreement and hold a public hearing. And so that's what we're here to do today. If approved, it'll go to the council for final consideration and approval on the 25th. And just a reminder, this is supported by Kerbal 2050 then the Parks Master Plan. And at this point, I will turn it back over to you for any questions and to hold a public hearing. Board, any questions or comments from the board? Okay. I'll open the public hearing at 508. Is anyone uh, we have no willing to speak? registered speakers. No one, no one wants to speak on this? Then I'll close the public. Y'all can speak if you're, even yeah. if you're not yes. registered. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Hi, I'm Lisa Nye Saladin. I live at 1015 Morningside Drive. I'm a business owner here in Texas, and I've been here for 27 years. Um, I'm pretty much a single-issue gal. I'm all about bike lanes, pedestrian, accessibility for alternative forms of transportation, and exercise, get outdoors, be active, play. And uh, this thing is, this fitness park would go along perfect with that. The thing that's kind of striking to a lot of people is that these fitness parks that we used to have way, way, way back were all made out of wood and they all deteriorated and caused a whole bunch of maintenance issues. These present day fitness parks seem like a really good thing because they seem way more sustainable than anybody could just stop by and get their exercise in for the day. So anyway, I, I, I am in great support of this, I think that the community continues to grow in terms of the Get Outdoors, Be Active play that is such a um, great tagline for our Parks Department. So I would support this. Thank you. Anyone else? Real quick. Sure. Hi, my name's Eric Silvius. Uh, thanks for, um, I'll try not to be redundant, Lisa kind of um, really, really covered it. Um, I'm also on the Parks and Rec Board 
Um, an addition like this uh, fitness court to, to Louise Hayes is, is uh, goes right in line with what public parks are all about. The, the majority getting the most people there with a large diversity of variety of activity. And obviously this is just another piece in the puzzle of getting people present at the park. Um, and then your, your entire um, physical activity, just being, being around others and all those things that are good for us, these things build into. So I'm strongly in support of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna close the public hearing at 510. Any further comments from the board or staff? Do you have timing on this? Yes, so it'll go to council if approved today. It'll go um, on the 25th. Then we will begin working with uh, Blue Cross on acceptance of the grant. Um, and then we, pr we expect it to be completed in the spring. Okay. So we'll get, it's a pretty quick timeline. When, I'm sorry, when did you say completed? In the spring. Expected to have it installed and opened. Spring's only two weeks, so. <laughs> March. Yeah, we have spring? You got to aim pretty specific in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody want to make a motion? I move that we uh, vote to support the, the request as presented. Okay. Second. So, all right. Uh, Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. On to item 6C, uh, project funding agreement between the City of Kerrville, Texas Economic Improvement Corporation, and the City of Kerrville, Texas, for the development and construction of an extension to the City's River Trail from the Tranquility Island Bridge to the scenic downtown Overlook Pavilion. Okay. All right. And as you recall, at, um, at your last meeting, staff was also directed to prepare a funding agreement for the next extension of the River Trail, which is the downtown segment. Um, to review, the River Trail first opened in 2012, so we are celebrating our 10th anniversary of the first opening in December. It's a half-mile segment from the Riverside Nature Center to Tranquility Island, and that part was funded via a $500,000 voter-approved bond in 2002. EIC then provided $6 million in funding for the next several extensions, along with $2 million in improvements for the Louise Hayes Park improvements. This brought the trail from Kerrville Shriner Park to the Dieter Center um, a little over four miles. And then in 2019, the EIC provided an additional $1.5 million for the one-mile extension to Shriner University that opened in September 2020. The River Trail has continued to be supported through a variety of community plans in support of the general community. It was strongly identified in Kerrville 2050. The River Trail Master Plan calls for a downtown segment. In May of last year, the EIC funded the conceptual study of the Master Plan. In April of this year, the Parks Master Plan was updated and adopted and includes the uh, downtown segment as its number one priority. And just as a reminder, here's a snapshot of all of the River Trail related items in the Kerrville 2050 plan. The Parks Master Plan, it was identified as a number one priority River Trail project connecting G Street to downtown. And it's also identified in the adopted River Trail Master Plan as well. So again, this application is for a little over a million dollars for the downtown segment. Um, there's four segments, two phases. This would be phase one. Um, it would be from the library ramp, Tranquility Island ramp, down to the current footbridge below the downtown pavilion in Louise Hayes Park. Um, and then phase two, um, that would be funded at a different time with the exception of all of the permitting process. We're asking that to be included in this ask. Um, so that'll get you about 5,100 linear feet, approximately um, one mile is the entire trail. This segment would be about 1,600 linear feet that you would be funding. And that's highlighted in yellow. Okay. The approval timeline, again, it goes to council twice. It goes to EIC twice. We're back here with the funding agreement and to hold the public hearing as we are required to do. If approved today, it'll go to the council on the 25th for final consideration and approval. And I will turn it back over to you for any questions and to hold a public hearing. Thank you. Okay. Um, board, any comments? Would this be funded all at one time? The, yes. The phase phase one would include the first two segments and the permitting for the rest of the trail. But we would, again, pay as bills are submitted, not yes, sir. in a lump right. sum up front. Yes, it goes yeah. into a project account, which staff would then manage. Gotcha. 
No questions of staff? Okay, then I'm going to open the public hearing at 514. Any speakers? We have uh, five citizen speakers. Kay Carter. Hi, um, my name is Kay Harder. I live at 520 um, Fairway Drive. And um, I'm here to talk about the trail because my husband, who couldn't be here tonight, I'm speaking for both of us. We love the trail. We've loved it from the beginning, and we've been so excited every time there was another extension added. And we use it probably once or twice a week, uh, year-round. We bike and we walk on it. We use our bikes. We go do errands. We go to volunteer duties. We just recreate. And it connects us with so many different things. And so I just feel like it's been a boon to uh, the entire community, especially during COVID, to get people out and uh, feel free and be out in nature, I guess you might say. Um, so we support any uh, additions to the trail I might say with the exception of if it were to be somehow developed and made into like hotels restaurants bars like we don't really want San Antonio Riverwalk um, I we love that it's uh, has a natural corridor uh, with the river of course makes a big difference but uh, we love it so what I wanted to say is that um, the proposal is welcome, but because I think Mr. Appel mentioned this at a previous hearing, which I was not at, but I think I saw it in the paper, <clears throat> that because this proposed addition already has a trail across from it on the other side of the river, what we would really love to see is the effort and money expended to extend the river trail. I guess it's towards the west, towards Nimitz Lake and even all the way down to where Thompson Drive crosses that, it would just open up that whole part of the community. And for the, what, we worked on the 2050 uh, plan every time we got the chance, we contributed to that. And from what I recall, <clears throat> it ended up being where there was a lot of uh, areas out that direction to add more housing and more different things where our city could grow in that direction. There's land to do that and it's already starting to happen. And I just think it would serve the community to use the money, as I said, and the, and the effort to take it out that way and benefit more of the community than doubling up to where it already is. But as I say, we uh, appreciate it so much, and we thank you for supporting the trail and continuing to do that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I'm one of four parks members, um, board, board members um, that are present here today. Um, and I think this goes uh, extending the river trail um, fits in perfectly with uh, the mission statement to, you know, to promote a healthy community, um, to support economic development and quality of life here in Kerrville. The six miles of the river trail space um, are utilized daily by members of the community and visitors uh, for things like exercise, Leisure. I've seen it as people using it for commute to work, um, a means to access the small HEB off Sydney Baker, uh, dog socializing, among other activities. And in the last year, organizations and groups such as the Riverside Nature Center, the Volunteer Services Council for Kerrville State Hospital, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and the Kerrville Craft Beer Run have all held their 5K races on some portion of the River Trail. Um, so. Personally, I love accessing the trail to get to Riverfest and the fourth uh, on the river by using that footbridge uh, via the overlook over there by the um, what used to be the old Bank of America. Um, but um, this is exactly where that extension would kind of uh, fit in from the, the footbridge over to Tranquility Island. So I'm just here to voice my support. It does fit in line when we put out a survey to the public early this like this year 51 percent of responses asked for expansion of that trail from g street to um downtown and so i'm just here to voice my support of this extension thank yeah. you <laughs> elizabeth hearn Hello, I'm Elizabeth Hearn, and I am a walker on the River Trail almost every day. Love the River Trail, huge asset to Kerrville. And I just had the question, and it may have been discussed in previous meetings, the priority, because yes, any, as you said, any extension or any addition to the River Trail is a wonderful asset to the community. 
but the idea of extending it further west seems like I don't understand why that wasn't a priority, but I may have missed a meeting somewhere along the way on why extending it west and in an area where it wouldn't be redundant with trails that are already there. But my husband and I, we walk up the, um, you know, those steps that go up to the overlook, and then we walk through downtown, which supports the downtown community, and we sometimes go to restaurants downtown, and then we could walk back down by the library and go <coughs> down that new great um, ramp that was put in. So we're just thrilled with what's here, and I guess I'd just like to consider or understand a little bit more on why the priority right now isn't to extend the trail further west. Thank you. I saw he had to leave. I saw him leave. And Melissa Southern. Hello again. Um, I won't repeat what others have said except to say, of course, as a Corville citizen, I am definitely a fan of the River Trail. I thought maybe the only thing that I could add is, as a business owner, seeing people coming in from out of town on a regular basis, quite a few of them, that is something that all visitors to Kerrville virtually say to me, well, you know, when they're eating at the restaurant or something like that, they'll say, oh, we love the River Trail or we want to go on the River Trail. How do we get to the River Trail? Those types of things. So, you know, I think we've already definitely seen how it's a benefit to those of us who live here in our daily lives. But again, going back to economic vitality and things that help Kerrville grow, um, I think it's really just something important. So I thought I would just kind of let you know how I see that on a regular basis with visitors in town. Thank you. Thank you. That's our last citizen speaker. Okay, no additional speakers. Thank you, Danny. Bruce Drakey, 615 Earl Garrett. I love the river trail. I love the river. I kayak all the time. I use the river trail regularly and have for many years. I am, though, also really surprised that we're not extending the trail to the, to the west. If we look back at the history of the river trail, going back to when Christine was still here in 2010, the first phase of the river trail was actually closer to Guadalupe Park and heading toward Knapp Road. And that all changed and it's fine and the trail's wonderful. But it, I'm also very surprised that a project that Mr. Hewitt first presented 12, 14 months ago was almost $4 million to do this section from G Street to the library. And at the time, it was really poo-pooed. And, and so when this came back, to double up the river trail on either side on a section that Mr. Hewitt himself described as extremely expensive from the foot trail to G Street, really surprised about that. And so I, I'm, I'm just here to voice um, opposition to that, that we should be looking to the west, we should be making this trail longer, including more of the city in ways that would be actually better spent, wouldn't cost as much money. This, is, this phase two is a very expensive section. Um, the, from Guadalupe Street to Guadalupe Park to at least Knapp Road, uh, it, the business owners are, or the property owners are uh, willing to do that. We've already got the trail going that way. We've got the new river park on the other side. If you look back at the plans that were done at what was the Family Sports Center in 2010, what well, was after the Family Sports Center in, in 2012, uh, there's ADA ramp that goes all the way down, creates amphitheater. That property owner is still willing to do that with the city as he was back at that time. And so it's, it's really surprising to me that we're gonna double up the river trail instead of expanding it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Um, it occurred to me when this gentleman was speaking that um, if, if it were to extend to the west from Limo Street Bridge, that's already in place as the natural crossing of the river. The trail could go down the other side, which is less developed, and it would be, and it's flatter, I think, maybe not. But I think that would also be a nice option to take it down to where the new apartments are, down the, towards the end of Thompson. So it wouldn't have to be on the business side because that's a little complicated with businesses and parking lots and that kind of thing. So just wanted to throw that out. Thank you. Any other speakers? 
Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing at 524. Would you like to address the issue of going west? Sure. As I uh, mentioned in our meeting last month, the um, extension going west was is still on our master plan. It was originally scheduled to be built um, with the Dieter Center section. It was supposed to end at Guadalupe Park or even farther down through Thompson um, Bridge. But the issue with that was the easement acquisition. Uh, we were not able to obtain easements through several of the properties going farther west, so we did have to end it at the Dieter Center, and that's why we ended it there. Um, the trail is linear. We can't skip and jump over properties to connect it. It's, it's a puzzle piece, and you have to have all the pieces in place in order to continue to build the trail. And unless that changes, um, we can no longer go west. And the what was the impetus for proposing this section now? The downtown segment? Yeah, they were yeah. talking about now. What, what, yeah, what? so, so am, I, am I understanding that the EIC did request for this project to be funded, or at least a study, and so that's what came to you. Um, you funded this in May of last year, um, so it was brought forth. We did that, looked at the feasibility of it. Um, it did rank as the number one priority trail segment in the, in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, so that was identified as the number one priority, um, and so all of those lines with a line up to um, the funding application for the segment. When we first looked at this, wasn't it wasn't the consideration going to be with the Arcadia tying in and doing a boardwalk piece? I know that was too expensive and that kind of got scrapped, but wasn't that part of the the thought process on what may, would make that segment of the trail unique, different, and and connect directly to the downtown in a different way? Yes, you do recall that correctly. Um, we did evaluate that, and exactly as you pointed out, it wouldn't be. Uh, is the cost is much more um, expensive, and I don't know, John, if you want to speak to this. Um, our engineer what that did the unique, study unique is here, and he can answer any engineering questions you have. It is way too expensive. Good afternoon. I'm John Hewitt with Hewitt Engineering. So yes, we looked at that that boardwalk, and it was just too expensive. That was a problem. And the other thing that st that was one of the reasons we looked at this segment was it was going to help the downtown area. The thought was that we'd bring the East End people down to downtown through this trail, and then also the Shriner students could come all the way down the trail back to the downtown area. Now, Malcolm Matthews was involved when we looked at two other options. The first one that we wanted to do was go west, like Bruce had talked about. Um, not only was the easement an issue, but also getting past in that 1011 bistro area. It was very tight and again it was very hard to get through there economically. We also looked at going on the south side uh, all the way down along Thompson Drive to the landing area and maybe even past the landing area and the problem there is we have to get past the water treatment plant and again that was a, a expensive option to get past there. I don't know that we have a, an idea on how we can get past the treatment plant in that area. So that's what some of the thinking was when we did the conceptual studies on all of this. Actually, when you talked about not being able to get an easement, was that for any price or was that the landowner wanted too much money for it or the city wasn't willing to, to pay what the landowner wanted? Or I mean, it seems to me that most things are available at the right price, and I just, you know, I, in the big picture of things, I don't know. And, and is it just one property owner? Is it multiple property owners? It's multiple properties. Like how many? And I believe I believe there's three. Residences along Guadalupe Street? Yes. I mean, have we looked at options like um, some sort of a sidewalk or even a pedestrian lane on the street of some kind for a stretch? until we can get back down to the park. I mean, yeah, all those, that was looked at. There's, I think there's a big study on all that. Starting up a new segment of the trail, um, you know, behind the old fitness center and going from there. I mean, I know it'd be great to get it all linked together, but I mean, that's a fabulous, fabulous resource that we have on Nimitz Lake. And it's free of flood debris. It's, you can see, a really unique section of the Guadalupe River that's beautiful and uh, you know, I, just, I see a lot of opportunity with bringing trail onto that 
portion of the Guadalupe River. Uh, oh. Sure. Um, you mentioned that on the south side, taking it down the south side after Lima Street down toward the landing, the only problem was the water treatment plant. If that's the only problem, I would think maybe there'd be some way to go up towards the street and around it instead of something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have deliveries to the treatment plant all day long, and there's issues with access and potential accidents with the bikers and so that was part of the problem because I mean there's that that's a great way to go if you can get on that side of the river we even looked at maybe even going in the river a little bit and it wasn't economical to do that and it was an environmental issue also I think security so yeah security is an issue at the water treatment plant that would be a, a big hill to, to overcome and one of the other challenges of of development is typically so sidewalks are a good example the city doesn't require sidewalks all throughout the city on raw undeveloped land that comes as development comes and so on like the western southern section of the lake where McDonald's property is at they've been kind enough to say hey as development happens down here we'll grant the easement that allows us the ability to to build that trail those properties next to it have yet to develop. That's one of the approaches and one of the discussions that we have with them as we look to find feasible economic ways to acquire that property to kind of help, you know, build those things along. Um, but typically that's how we do it. We would go and say, you know, it's just a project that hasn't, hasn't totally come to fruition yet. And so when it does, you know, one of our number one priorities when we're plotting that is to say, hey, we have a river trail. We, it's going to go around the lake. We want to acquire this portion of it as an easement. Are you willing to do that? And to kind of negotiate that back and forth. That's typical. the typical way that we would normally go about that on the undeveloped <clears throat> side, right? On the developed side, that is that is a discussion that we can have with folks. Um, but in my short time here, when I looked at kind of the list of council priorities and looking through the Parks Master Plan, this was the... This was the first one on the list of things to come ask EIC. Well, Bruce said this, but but I want to say it too because I'm, I think the only one that was on the EIC board at the time that the original six million dollar funding request was done, and extending the trail to the boat dock at Knapp, I believe, but definitely on Nimitz Lake. That was part of the original plan that was presented and approved by EIC. So to me, that makes it an original first tier priority because it was part of the original plan. I just, I guess I just want to make, make sure I want to do the next segment. I just want to make sure it's the best next segment. Um, part, part of, part of me thinks that the idea like I mentioned, for a boardwalk and, and, the, and the Arcadia going in at that time and connecting directly up to those businesses made it very unique. And um, we don't have the ability to have that same level of uniqueness with this section of the trail now for, for pricing purposes. Um, but I definitely, I definitely want to see the next segment go in. But, but I mean, I think... What, what, is the, what is the best decision for that? And I don't want to force an issue because we already have the engineering done and because we already have the plans. I don't want to waste money either. I don't want to say, well, let's throw these plans out. They've already been done and developed and it's ready to go if that's not the best way to. So, I mean, I see not wanting to waste what we've already done and all the work that's been put into this and, and the fact that it is going to be good to have another segment no matter what that is. But I'm struggling too with... Do we go with what we have and what, what's what's ready to go? It's still a good thing, or is there a better thing that we need to hold out on? I, I don't I don't know. Well, let me say too, when last year when we approved the um, fifty thousand dollars for the study, um, it was not, at least in my mind, an initial approval of doing that. It was just this is on the project list. Let's see what it's going to cost. Because mm -hmm. originally the boardwalk idea was to be out, and so when all that fell through, we came back with the expense of doing it. And as I recall the discussion we had, um, 
it was going to be very difficult construction. You talk about bringing barges maybe in to do the construction down that part of the area. Uh, and that, uh, uh, and the cost was, was high. Now the cost is up almost 30% from what it was just over a year ago. Uh, and, um, I mean, as I, I expressed at the last meeting, my feeling is this is redundant from what we currently have. The Shriner kids can still get downtown. They just got to walk, you know, the, the trail takes them downtown. Uh, I don't know where else we can go. I, it's it's um, unfortunate we can't get the um, property rights to get it to Nimitz because that would be great. I agree. But I don't, just because we can't do that, to me, doesn't mean we ought to do this just to do something. I don't particularly see where this is going to uh, this however linear feet section. I don't see how that's going to draw anybody else downtown just to walk on that little piece. Nor do I see it being much in the way of economic, you know, help to the downtown um, merchants. Who I'm all for doing everything we can to help. Uh, so as I said at the last meeting, I think the cost is going to be significantly more than what we see right now because the whole project. I believe it was a four-year project. So these numbers are subject to four years of inflation that you tell me what it's going to be. I don't think any of us knows. Uh, and and for that reason, I'm going to vote against this, as I did at the last meeting. I just don't think this is something we ought to do at this time. So that's, that's my view. Anybody else want to? The only two cents I'll chip in is that, you know, we can sit here and talk all day about what we want to do. We would all love to be able to build it down the Dennis Lake. We'd all love to be able to get around the water treatment plant have that not be an issue, but the reality is that we can't. Uh, we would all love to build the boardwalk, but the fact is we can't because it's too expensive, and I don't know what quote-unquote too expensive is, but I'm new enough to the board that I don't know what those numbers look like. I was in favor of this piece of the, of the trail because it creates a loop in downtown Kerrville. I think that's a convenience factor for people that want to be able to walk along that side of the river and be able to have easy access to the businesses in downtown. Restaurants, Arcadia, such, and so on. Um, I understand that we have to pick and choose our projects, but to me, the beautification of downtown Kerrville has been an amazing process over the last 20 years. We've all watched it go from a ghost town to a beautiful downtown, and I think the more that we can do down there, the better. Just same to speak about the, the street project that we just, just approved a few years ago. So, I understand and I agree with Danny to a large degree, but we don't want to do it just to do it. But I believe there is value in this and having people be able to walk around all of the Louise Hayes Park properties and around that beautiful part of the river right there just before the, the main water spillway. Um, so I see, I, I would vote in favor of it. Yes. I have a question. If uh, I'm, I'm relatively new to the board and have not been part of the last year's conversations, but I, uh, I'm a great fan of the River Trail and use it a lot, uh, and I'd like to see it continued, but I, I'm feeling conflicted right now. Uh, and I have a question on the issue of going around the water plant. It, do, is, are we to understand that it's not physically possible or it's not economically possible? I'd say both, physically and economically. I think there was a detailed study done of all these because our first priority was to go to Nimitz Lake. We beat that to death and kind of gave up for right now. Then the second priority was to go around the south side, and we couldn't make that work either. So, I, like I said, I thought Malcolm had prepared a report on this where he studied all the different options, and I think there's one out there. I just don't, I'm not familiar with where it's at. But you're right, those were the two desired options that you're talking about. <coughs> one on the south side along Thompson Drive and going to, out to Nimitz Lake. Well, as I say, I, I mean, I, I'm conflicted because I'm a great fan of the trail. I mean, if, if we didn't have to worry about money, I would support putting it anywhere and everywhere we could because it's <laughs> such a wonderful thing for the community. But I, um, I, don't, have, I don't have a lot of the background that many of you do but it, it, it looks to me like a, a, a choice of alternative uses of capital, and I just don't fully understand what the alternative uses are right now to, to the project. This, I'm talking about trail investment. I just don't understand enough about it. 
Um, I, I'm curious about the the easement acquisition. I mean, was this is this this goes back to the beginning of the. How far back does does the, do those conversations go? I guess so. That goes back to. Can you bring up the presentation again, Martin, please? Because ownership changes. That and... goes back to. Okay, so that discussion was in 2018 when we were doing the um, Lowry to Dieter Center segment. Could you go back to the map you, you're showing here? Because I think that might. The master plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one? Sure. Those are, I guess, all the, am I correct? These are kind of all the alternatives that have been considered, you know, for the river, the for the river trail. Yes. So this is the um, adopted river trail master plan. Everything in yellow has been completed. Uh, the blue is the, tr the segment that we're discussing today, and the red are just potential um, trail extensions that would obviously need easements and funding to be procured. So we're still showing the parts we say we can't do. Yeah, it, Although this looks like this goes around the water plant, the red. Yeah, because it is a master plan. Okay, but conceptual plan. this is going around the water plant, right? The, the way this looks on this map? It is. Outside. Yeah. So we've now decided that can't be done. It's, yeah, it's on the highway. Yeah. So I, I, it's, you know, I think it's a tough call for me. I mean, it is. I think it's just so. Any other comments? <laughs> I mean, in summary, I, I think it's the cost per linear foot of this is too high. I don't like you. I don't see a lot of economic be develop uh, economic benefit for the downtown merchants and. Um, I, again, I would. I, we've got a lot of really smart people, and you know, I just I, I feel like you know, there's got to be some ways to get some trail onto Nimitz Lake somehow, and I'd really, really like to see us commit some resources to make that happen. Is, it, is public comment over? Yes, I'm sorry. I thought we were. Okay, any other? Anybody want to make a motion? I don't know what to do, well, to be honest with you. Can we table can, this? Can we, do we have to? Do we have to make a motion today? You can table it. Can we table it and maybe reconsider it next month? I'd like to know more about the easement acquisition and what the what the issues are, if that's the only issue on, on one of those next segments, just to look back and see if there's what the three what the three areas of concern are there. <clears throat> yep. okay. So we... Yeah, we can pull that information. It seems like the lowest hanging fruit if, if you're talking about moving west. Yeah. And also, I mean, I would like to know from, from downtown businesses, I, I'd really like to see more about what what the proposed, you know, additional benefits are and if that really if that really numbers out to to looping the trail. I'm not opposed to looping it either, but not sure just want to make the best decision to move the to move the next phase of the trail forward we have a limited group here today I'd like to have the PIC board fully discuss this before yeah. we make a decision and yeah um, I think if we could put it out at least until next month and maybe have more community discussion about it as well sure yep we can definitely bring back um, the information regarding the easements from so the past history. We'll make a motion to table. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we table it until next month's meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Can we? I need to clarify something. Can yeah, we, we don't have a meeting next month, do we? Or we do we? No, we we've got a meeting on the books for next month. It's the it was going to be it's the week before the Thanksgiving week is the schedule, I believe. So if we if we talk about things like easement acquisitions, is that a is that a um, a closed session? Is that a? It can be. I mean, uh, I don't know. That if we're talking about specifics, yeah, we can because it's a real estate discussion. I think for us, it would be beneficial to understand um, just just so just clarity from everybody because we talked about a lot of things. Uh, from our standpoint, we brought this because this was listed as the number one river trail priority on on, on, on the documents that we had. But I don't benefit from the history. 
and we need to do some research on some of these things and talk to Mr. Hewitt. <coughs> so, so understanding the easement, you know, challenges that we faced in the past, um, and some of the other discussion points on Nimitz Lake and how we see the path forward for what that looks like, um, in, in, at least in the past discussions. Um, and then <clears throat> I don't think by next month we could probably get you a cost per linear foot on that necessarily, but we can talk to, you know, we can talk to the engineers and see if we can get some of that discussion. Um, well, is there anything else? Well, what I kind of think a lot of us, some of us are saying here, at least from my perspective, I might like to see you redo this plan here and say, we can't go that way. We can't, we just absolutely can't go by the water plan. So take that off the plan. What's the next item? Where can we go? Where can we go? Because we talk about going, you know, out, you know, um, out by the, the sports complex, etc. Uh, but if we don't, if that is impossible, if we can't do it, then what are the other options for the river trail besides looping it down where we're talking about looping it, looping it? Okay. I mean, is the river trail going to end there? We're not going anywhere else? Is that it? Or what happens? You know, I, I don't know. I think we can come back with some answers to that. Would you all like to see um, kind of a community priority list on that? Because I think we had some of that in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that benefits. Yeah, I'm just group. curious. I know I keep bringing this up. I'm just curious about how much of the community priority deals with really that specific piece, or maybe not, of, of bringing it up to a boardwalk, boardwalk level where it's actually walkable with with the street level. I, I don't know how that weighs into someone's priority because we've yeah. taken that piece off of the table. That's the part I can't really factor in or out of the equation of, of the looping part. So like if that was part of the Yeah, I mean for me it was. Well, for I, I, I was personally when I was when I when I heard we're gonna do a boardwalk and it's gonna go and it'll be going behind the Arcadia and down, I thought that was amazing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden when it dropped down I went okay it'll be a loop and that's okay but i was uh, i was it kind of it wasn't the same project i guess cool, yeah. yeah okay so i guess is that priority list based on it being a boardwalk or not does that impact the the answers that you had on that I mean, one of the things we can come back with is part of the discussion right so um it's obviously a it's it's a big item right because that loop is that lake is massive so it's a it's a big section. However, we however we you know bite it off, um, and so I think what we can bring back to y'all is is you know priorities as we kind of see them. Priorities you know have those priorities shifted? Was the discussion different in the past than it is today? Were people you know talking about something else? Um, you know, and we'll talk through the challenges of uh, easement acquisition, and then if we have some discussions with folks. Um, and we start talking about pricing for certain things, if we, ever, if we get to that, then, yeah, that's it. I mean, I think in the last four stuff. years, we've seen a lot of redevelopment on Guadalupe Street as it is. I mean, I've, I, I, we've, we've put in a lot of, uh, there's some short-term rentals down there now, and there's, there, you know, there's been some movement there. So I, I just wonder if the feeling is different now, okay. if we haven't visited it for the last four years. And I don't, I don't think that's a final no on the treatment center. I think that what we're saying is there's been there's challenges identified, and we don't know what those challenges are per se, all of them, because we haven't um, done a study yet on that segment. And that might be what we have to come back to it with is, is so I know Nimitz Lake is is you know one of the study areas that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, there's talks of a lot of fun projects in the works. Uh, some of that is raw, undeveloped land, and so. Um, I think we can come back to y'all with some some thoughts and ideas for next month. Are, are your are your guidelines for planning uh, that the trail system has to be continuous? If, for example, uh, if the water plant presents a uh, a showstopper that either either literally for for security reasons or other physical reasons or costs, you simply can't you couldn't go around it. Could you develop trail on the other side of it and go all the way around the lake? In other words, does your whole system have to be a loop that's connected? It does not. No, there's there's always going to be some areas that provide those challenges. I mean, like you were talking about going up from the river to the street and then coming back down. I mean, there's you'll see that in a lot of areas, and so there's a way. 
money solves all problems for sure. Um, I think we just don't know what the answers are to some of those questions yet. Um, what what the cost of those will be? You know, we have a detailed ish estimate that's thirty percent insufficient from the time it was created. Um, so if we wanted to go out and take the time to review from an engineering standpoint what Nimitz what it would look like to do that for Nimitz Lake, we could do that. Um, I think we'd probably bring back a proposal to the IC to help fund that because um, we don't have a detailed study uh, as of right now. That's a master plan. Yeah. All right. And then table it to the next one. Okay. Did we answer your, your yes, question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I believe we had a motion to table. Is that right? Yes. Do we have a second? No. Do we have a second to table? Second. All in favor? Tabling? Opposed? Passes four to one. Okay. Um, I guess there's no reason for an executive session. Uh, I do want to bring up, uh, we all got Mike's uh, email about legal. That was raised last time about approval of legal expenses. I, I didn't respond back, but I'm fine with what he came back with as the rest of the board. Yes. Okay. And, and so we, we won't change the administrative services contract this year, but we'll drop that language. I, I know what the consensus is, yeah. and we'll, we'll make that change next year. Okay. For sure. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Anybody got an item for a future agenda? Okay, we are adjourned at 551. Yep. <coughs> I don't get to do that very often.